every business in the 21st century is a media agency. Hello, familia. I am Junia Pagani and I am a digital strategist focused on educational digital products. You might know me from when I was a brand strategist, if you were there with me back then, or you might be arriving here because digital products are creating a huge surge in the internet right now, alongside with other topics like AI. With it, focus, comes the need of creating a personal brand. Why did I start the video saying such a, you know, giving such a harsh statement? One, because I'm gonna ca catch your attention. And two, because for 90% of the niches out there, if you're not in the internet, you're not gonna be heard. You're not gonna be seen by your customers. People are using the internet. They have been using the internet. They have been using social media. That's nothing new in order to find businesses, in order to see if a business is for real, if they can trust that business. And one of the things that we need to build as a personal brand, as someone putting their faces out there is authority. And authority comes from the word author to be the author of something in latin our actor i don't know how to pronounce it autor it's how i would pronounce if i'm speaking portuguese means to originate to promote to invent so you are here as another of a thesis an idea a movement in order to inspire people to transform through your products, through your services, through the things that you believe that the things that you believe in and that you want to bring to people. So I believe that I can transform your personal brand, your solopreneurship by adding physical products to your cash flow structure to your cost structure to how you offer the things that you know your expertise to people and that's what i want to talk about because authority comes from many different sources it can come for example before the internet you would respect and some people still do and you should but we know now that that's not enough to have a degree, to be a master or a doctor in something. A degree nowadays does add a lot of authority, I'm not saying that it's useless. And for certain industries, that's a must to have, especially health related or financial related, you can convey authority from experience and knowledge. And degrees, they fall into that category. But experience, and if you've been enough in your industry, you will see that there are things you're not gonna learn in a degree. And I've studied digital media, I've studied design because I was a digital strategist, a brand strategist before I branched out and opened my expertise, my area of knowledge. I realized that strategy is strategy and it's better to understand strategy as a whole than be just very tunnel visioned into one thing. And you will realize, therefore, that knowledge and experience experience can come from many sources including having the right mentors when i started photography i was 14 or 15 and i had i'm probably gonna put a picture here somewhere mentors i have people from a forum that were experienced photographers they were journalists they were photojournalists in that case and they were sports photographers they were wedding photographers so they all had something to share and it worked more like a mastermind than a mentoring kind of you know one-on-one -on -one thing but it 
accelerated my learning. So study and experience, they count a lot, but you have to give your story with it. You have to tell your story. And I talked about this a lot more in detail in a medium articles. Your experience will allow you to put working methods together. And once you have methods, you are able to teach other people. And when you teach other people, you are building authority. You are creating that relationship between mentor and student, between someone who knows a lot, who's experienced a lot, and who is ready to share. Does it mean that you're gonna teach everyone? Does it mean that you're gonna be pleasing everyone, that everyone is gonna take value from you? No, and when you are on this journey, when you are doing this personal brand thing, one of the things that I always tell people to be, to include in their narratives is provocations. And I teach my mentors, my mentees this. I teach my mentors. I teach my mentees this. So you're kind of getting a little bit of a taste of it. Provocations that sort of put fire on the hay. Okay, I started this video with a provocation because when they are part of your narrative, you are positioning yourself. You are positioning your thinking. But Jules, what if I don't have experience? Well, force yourself to have experience, my dear. What's the point of knowing if you're not gonna execute it? So if you know a lot about something, go out there, get clients, even if you're doing it for free, get clients, get results, do it on yourself, be a case study for your own brand. So that was authority through experience and knowledge, but you also have authority through self-confidence. And this one is a tricky one because people will order things and forget that there might be research speaking against it but they say it with such confidence and they twist the narrative in a way that it ends up sounding real to people so self-confidence needs to be the way you communicate your posture your image should be reflected on how you talk about your story but we need to be careful how we talk about concepts to not ignore and to not mix up facts and opinion so be careful and i was actually talking i mentioned briefly this one folder in my phone okay because we all have a moment where we are doubting ourselves we are not robots. We are not always secure. And that happens to me all the time. Of course it does. Comes a time where maybe you're a little bit more tired or maybe you were sick or maybe something's happening and you were stressed out and you start doubting yourself. And so I have this photo called, and I coined this a long time ago, the ego baiting. So all the positive feedback that I've received from people along the years, especially from when I was doing brand strategy is in that folder and I will look through it. Mentees, students, just people who follow me, I screenshot it and I put it there because it reminds me that, hey, what I am doing is bringing people a value. And that's kind of like an extra that I'm including here, but it's important that you understand also that though that feedback, that kind of feedback, it gives people as well confidence in you. Not just you feeling confidence with yourself, but also brings confidence to other people. And it's when you work with something like a business where there's money involved, you will also have people sharing how much they've made. Some people are more comfortable. A lot of people are not comfortable. I think it's tacky as well as hell. I mean, when experts are washing your face with numbers without it without giving context i think it's tacky when people when experts 
especially when they are very, for example, if I was just constantly sharing my revenue, I think when it's dangerous to do that in the internet, I am much rather inclined to share social proof. So when people feel comfortable in sharing their revenue with me or their profit, because a lot of people share revenue, but they don't share profit, okay? So be careful when you looking out there because they want to look like they are an authority but in fact you don't really know the full context so the results from people they can be more sentimental or more logical in a sense where they are sharing revenue for example or how many kilos they've lost or just how they feel about it and both are valid in order to build that authority okay so don't feel like you need a very specific kind of testimonial. That's a mistake that people make because people need to feel in order to make a purchase decision. Because if you are doing this to sell your products and to sell your services, you need people to make a purchase decision. So don't think that someone who's saying they feel good by going through your course isn't a useful social proof piece. I've had like people thinking that it's not. But it is and not everyone is comfortable sharing their profits and their revenues and especially putting their face beside it because it's it's the internet right so that was authority through self-confidence and social proof as well and then we have authority conveyed from compassion and that's the beauty of the internet it's connecting with people i've made friends through the internet, there are still my friends that I've met in person. I've met people on the internet who have helped me somehow. And I've met people in the internet that I've helped somehow as well. And then we've met in real life. And, you know, it's 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 beautiful tool if you use it for beautiful things. But your knowledge can reach places of... And I'm, I'm gesticulating a lot with my hand, but it's not showing in the video. Knowledge, the things that you've experienced, can reach places of vulnerability in the internet, through the internet, where you physically might not be able to. So when you open the question box on your Instagram and you reply to people, you are reinforcing your authority through compassion. So the last video I was talking about how your content needs to be so basic that people at a certain level, at a starting level, can understand. And it's because it also builds authority. It doesn't just build confidence on them and gives them their first step but it's also a way for you to build your own authority as a personal brand as a person and i used the instagram question box because it's one of my favorite tools but dms as well and i i think people like the question box because when you reply to it it keeps that privacy so it is a good way to reinforce certain ideas and you can build a narrative and I'm gonna talk about narrative someday but you can build you can create a story you can tell and teach something to people and then open a box like you give a mini lesson and then at the end you open the question box like a Q&A after a lesson right like you would have a presenter on TEDx talk about I don't know TEDx if they do that but a conference a they are talking, an expert is talking about a topic, and then at the end, they open for questions. It's the same idea, but then on the internet. But you also have DMs, reply to your DMs, com uh, comments on platforms, commenting on other people's platforms as well. But what do you do when your authority is challenged? When someone doesn't agree with you and they have to say something? Thinking that you need to be loved by everyone, it's a surefire fire way to never get started on anything. And to hold yourself back from doing something beautiful to a few people. When your authority is challenged, 
you reinforce your ideas, you reinforce your beliefs, you agree that with yourself that you don't need to convince that person of anything. You position yourself and if they become a problem, block and leave on. Show to your audience how people do disagree with you, what you think, use that as an educational example, keep that person's privacy. 99% of the time you don't really need to expose who's giving you hate unless it's something absurd. Let's be honest over here, but use that as a tool to reinforce the people who are ready to advance with you. Because not everybody is even going to recognize they have an issue. A lot of people, when you poke a certain pain, will react, will bite. Sometimes it's not even worth blocking everyone. Think about that too. Sometimes that person just needs to sit a little bit with that thought. And they might come back in a year or two. So be careful when dealing with people online. You will find yourself, and that sort of connects with the other video I made, repeating yourself a lot, repeating the basics quite a bit. And that's part of building authority, that's part of repeating yourself in order, to people, in order for people to learn, in order for you to sentiment also your thinking and the way that you see your work and yourself. We often let go of the basics after a certain advancement of our knowledge, of our careers, and I think it's a great exchange actually because when you focus on the basics and you tell the basics all the time to people, it means that you are not letting go of the basics and it's usually the basics that make the difference in the end when you do the basics well everything else is just a plus so learn to repeat yourself identify what are the basics and use that to create stories and narratives so that people can grow with you so what i want you to do to finalize this i want you to one map your story and if i'm not mistaken there was a video i think it's the second or third video on, the, on this channel just do a pagani flicks and watch everything okay there's a lot of gold in here for you so map your story map your personality and when i say map your story i'm like i started this when i was a child and that contributed to me being that so when i was 14 I started teaching myself how to do photography and I told that story already and I got those uh, mentors and then I started teaching myself Photoshop and HTML and CSS so that allows me, allowed me to be multidisciplinary and have an understanding of the internet that I wouldn't have if I didn't do that back then. And teaching myself also all those subjects made me an autodidact which has helped me learn so much more and so much more easily and also face things, problems and issues that come up and be able to solve them very quickly, be resourceful, therefore, and it's that's a great quality to be as an entrepreneur, be resource, resourceful, great quality to have as an entrepreneur. English is definitely not a great quality for me. After you map out, your story, map out your personality. That will come up as well as you're talking about your story. And that's a very tough exercise to do. I had trouble doing that. I am still mapping my own story because left and right, I remember something. And then I go back and I list it and, you know, do the exercise again. So that's part of the basics as well. Then I want you to map out the bits and pieces of your knowledge that you think are fundamental for someone who is starting out now to know. And that's an exercise I also do when creating my courses because a lot of people create courses but they don't level their students, they don't introduce the basics in a structured form. So when you do that, you are already helping yourself 
when creating your first courses, your first ebooks, your first knowledge based digital products, okay? So, those three exercises, not two, let's say it's three map me out your story, personality, and then the basics of your knowledge are the exercises for today, okay? This mini lesson is super important and they are the foundation for you to even feel the confidence we discussed when sitting in front of your phone i have my phone right here and doing your stories i have my notes in my phone and you know talking to your audience like you doing your thing okay don't forget to follow and subscribe leave your questions oh when i have forgotten two videos in a row, I think, to invite you to my new Discord channel. So you can leave your questions in the Discord as well. You can leave your questions in the appropriate channel. We call them realms over there because we are building our empire digitally. Give me 10 years and you will see me in a castle. Blah, 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 blah. It's the microphone.